Welcome to the New Horizon Final Conference. My name is Erich Kiesler. I am the project coordinator. Unfortunately, we cannot meet today in person, but I'm very confident that you will enjoy the conference in the next two weeks. My name is Emma Tölingmeier and I'm the project manager of New Horizon. And during the final conference, I will be at your disposal for any technical questions. You'll find my email in the text below. And my name is Shauna Stack. You can find the Zoom link in the Eventbrite page where you can register throughout the conference. Uh, it's open the entire time. So you can take a look at all of our different sessions and uh, join us there. So now we'll hear a few words from our Viennese partners. Hello, we are from FFG, Austria's research promotion agency, and we are partners in the New Horizon project. Hi, I'm Pia. And I'm Susanna. I'm working at uh, FFG's Structural Programs Division and we discuss RI mostly in terms of a multi-level, multi-stakeholder, multidisciplinary approach with a focus on anticipation, inclusion, reflexivity and responsiveness. The key issue for us is of course uh, how to provide support for RI in terms of a portfolio of formats, programs and instruments. In session nine, we are presenting the interactions between the different aspects of society and research and innovation. I really look forward to these discussions. Hi there, we are from the Center for Social Innovations at SI in Vienna. My name is Elisabeth Unterfrauner and this is Ilse Marschalek. And we are both looking forward to our session, Social Lab Practices from First Hand with Lab participants as our special guests. Okay, cut. Yeah. Do I have to memorize your text soon? <laughs> okay. I'm super excited. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope I'm visible to all of you. Uh, welcome to this uh, final conference of the New Horizon project, which was uh, funded by the EC, and which is coming to a close after four years of hard work. And thank you so much for joining us online, and I hope you'll be able to join our other sessions in the next two weeks too. And with you, I mean over 500 registries coming from so many uh, different places, you as New Horizon participants, US social lab participants, US partner in fellow RRI projects, you as an expert in one of the many RRI aspects and US stakeholder trying to implement responsibility. So welcome very much to all of you. And of course, we would have liked, loved to uh, being in Vienna right now, but I, I suppose the online uh, version will work perfectly as well. So my name is Ingeborg Meijer. I'm a senior researcher at CDOTS Center for Science and Technology Studies in Leiden, the Netherlands, and I'm participant in Work Package 6 in the Societal Readiness Thinking Tool. And I will be your moderator this morning session. And with this, uh, I would like to hand over to Frans Fischler, who will give the formal opening address of the New Horizon Final Conference. And Frans Fischler is the President of the Board of Trustees of the Austrian Institute of Advanced Studies. Uh, and this institute was the coordinator or is the coordinator of this New Horizon endeavor in the last four years. Franz, the floor is yours. Well, thank you very much. Dear ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the final conference of the 2020 New Horizon project. Uh, for well-known reasons. Unfortunately, we cannot meet in person, but I'm sure that also under these special circumstances, the conference will be a great success. I'm delighted that so many participants have signed in and participate today in the, and in the coming days in the various events which are offered by the organizers exchange of knowledge, new learnings, the comparison of different standpoints, enlightening lectures are at the, at the core of uh, this event organized by the 
IHS and its partners. It is a real honor for us, the IHS, to be the host of this final conference. I think most of you know the IHS. It is a more than 50 years old research institute bringing together excellent economic, socio sociological, and politological researchers dealing with scientific issues at the edge between science and society. And this is exactly also the purpose of your conference. As it is mentioned in the invitation letter, the conference is about informing the attendees what the achievements and the lessons learned are in the 2020 project New Horizon. In addition, you will have plenty of networking opportunities to strengthen your contacts to the European and Global Research and Innovation Community around RRI. So, your activities are crucial for implementing the Innovation Union, one of the European Union's flagship initiatives. Therefore, I wish you all a successful conference and great benefits from your participation. Thank you. Thank you, Frans, for the opening of uh, the formal opening of this conference. And uh, the next speaker uh, in this uh, in this uh, session is Erich Wiesler, who will introduce New Horizon New Horizon project uh, in a bit of a little bit more detail and uh, and practicals. Thank you very much, uh, Frans Wiesler, and thank you very much, Ingeborg. Um, uh, in my presentation today, I, I would draw very much like you to take you a little bit into the New Horizon project, but uh, more important, I would like to give you a short overview of what we have been planning for the uh, next two weeks. Uh, the first question you might raise is, uh, why do we meet over uh, two weeks? Uh, normally conferences are only two days, so this why this prolonged um, time? And we thought um, having this experience now for more than a year of this pandemic situation and having so many meetings online, we thought it might be too uh, too tiring to sit for two and a half days only for, in front of the computer. And so we tried to have uh, a more uh, a more uh, to distribute our uh, sessions more slightly over the days. And you can pick um, what is of interest to you. So uh, so in order to avoid this kind of uh, screen fatigue, which we experience very often. So let me first uh, take you now to the. Uh, New Horizon objectives, uh, which were also important for us uh, to plan this program. So first of all, New Horizon is a four years pro a project, as was, as was already uh, mentioned by Ingeborg, and it's a very uh, uh, big project. As you can see, uh, maybe we can jump to the next slide and uh, jump back again, uh, Helmut. So you can see uh, this was the consortium in 2017 when we met in uh, the Institute for Advanced Studies for our kickoff meeting. And now uh, four years later, um, we, have, uh, we are meeting again, but now in the final conference. Could we go back to the uh, uh, first slide? Thank you very much, Helmut. No? Yes. Thank you. So what was the aim of uh, New Horizon? Actually, um, uh, New Horizon wasn't easy as, is a coordination project. It is, it, is, uh, it is planned to do something, to promote something. It is planned to promote the acceptance of responsible research and innovation in Horizon 2020 and beyond. And by beyond, we always meant uh, in the next framework program, which is currently starting, Horizon Europe, but also beyond Europe. That meant that we also included and involved um, um, uh, international partners from uh, the Caribbean, from India, and from South America. Um, the, the aim of the project was to co-create together with stakeholders, tailor-made actions and activities within each section of Horizon 2020. And I will come to that uh, later. 
We wanted to stimulate learning across sections about how to promote acceptance of responsible research and innovation. We wanted to provide a global perspective of RRI and disseminate the information beyond the European Union. We wanted to develop and co-create a societal readiness level uh, for responsible uh, for research and innovation, which then turned into the societal readiness thinking tool, which uh, Ingi Borgmaier and Nils Milgaard and others will also present in one session of this, uh, of this conference. We wanted to reflect, to learn, and to evaluate. Uh, we will uh, talk about this uh, in all sections, in all sessions, but also particularly in session one, but I will uh, come back to that as well. We wanted to promote the integration of responsible research and innovation in national uh, research and innovation funding programs. Uh, for that, we created uh, the RI network, and we wanted to disseminate best practices to promote the acceptance of RI across Horizon 2020 and generate long-term effects. And this is what uh, this whole conference is about, uh, to inform you, to discuss uh, the results of, uh, of our project of New Horizon and try uh, to hand over this, this legacy uh, to other projects and to you uh, to make uh, meaningful things which what we have experienced and found out. Can we jump to the next and the next? Um, so what was our approach? Our approach was basically uh, to work with social labs. So the social labs were at the core of New Horizon. The social labs build on a tradition of participatory and community-based action research. So they are totally uh, in line with uh, the concept of responsible research and innovation, which means to integrate and try to integrate stakeholders in, in co-creating um, uh, stuff. Um, social labs bring together people with common interest, with shared interest in solving together complex problems. In our case, this was how to integrate uh, uh, responsible research innovation in research organizations, in different stakeholders uh, of Horizon 2020. So social labs are interactive, they are experimental, and they are systematically created spaces intentionally managed to support stakeholders concerned in learning about and taking action to address societal challenges. Can we go to the next slide? So in our social lab, we had uh, the, main, uh, uh, the main activity in the social lab was uh, to diagnose a problem, to find, the, uh, to identify the right stakeholders which were, are interested in and are necessary in order to solve this problem, to bring them together in a series of workshops to, uh, to talk about the problem, to, um, to develop pilot activities, uh, which uh, address the, uh, the problem, to experiment with these pilot activities, uh, to adjust the pilot activities, and in this way to change their practice. Can we go on to the next slide? So in New Horizon, we had, uh, adapted uh, the social lab approach to co-create and implement RI-inspired activities in existing working environments. We have all together established 19 social labs uh, which represent all the main RI pillars defined in the framework program uh, Horizon 2020. Altogether, we involved in these social labs 725 stakeholders and uh, developed with them many, many ideas how to implement RI in research and innovation and developed 50 pilot actions which this conference will be about. Um, can we go on to the next slide? So you can see on this slide all these, uh, these different pillars. We have green is excellent science. We have industrial leadership, which is orange, societal challenges, which is blue, and diversity of approaches, which, which is um, um, pinkish. And then within these pillars, we have different social labs, for instance, in excellent science, European Research Council, uh, future of and emerging technologies, or uh, research infrastructures, uh, including e-infrastructure. So you can see that within these pillars, we created for each of the program lines um, a, a social lab. Can we go to the next slide? And now let me come to, um, to the program of this, um, of this uh, conference. 
first of all, I think naturally uh, EC policy and experience is key for responsible research and innovation. So how is the uh, how is the European Commission, um, what is the European Commission planning uh, with RRI? How is it taking up, uh, how is it funding? What are the experiences? What are the policy challenges? And we are very uh, happy that we have Lyndon Ferrer from DG Research and Innovation from the European Commission as uh, this afternoon as a, our keynote speaker. The moderation will by uh, Vincent Block and he will address uh, all these issues. Can we go on to the next slide? Uh, I already said that the social lab approach was extremely important for us. So uh, in this session, in session one, uh, we will discuss what was actually the experience, what was the practice, what were the challenges, what, was, um, what, what were the gains, what were the accomplishments, but also the difficulties of, uh, of the social labs, of these 19 social labs. Um, actually, within the New Horizon project, is, uh, we had this uh, particular work package which was, um, which was coordinated by ZSI in Austria, um, which was dedicated to cross-sectional learning. And we had two cross-sectional uh, uh, learning workshops and we had a dedicated uh, um, deliverable which was on what works, what doesn't work, what were the experiences of people uh, who are, have been involved in, in the social lab as a, a social lab uh, 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 manager, as facilitator, as participant. So uh, this is, will be the topic of session one. Can we continue in session two? Um, we, we saw that many, many uh, 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 pilot actions naturally were also dealing with the question of how to engage uh, the public. So for instance, in the social lab diversity of approaches, there was, an, uh, an, uh, there was a pilot action called tips and tricks of RI or in the social lab X and social lab uh, Marie Curie, um, there was a, um, there was a, uh, the uh, social lab participants uh, developed a, a scheme, how to involve the public. So the question of how to involve the public was key in many, many of our pilot actions. And this, um, uh, and this session will deal with this question, how to engage the public in uh, co-creation and into research practice. Can we go on to session three? Again, uh, many pilot actions also address the question of sustainability, of, uh, of, of, of um, decarbonization of uh, Green Deal. So in this, uh, we, you can see here pictures of, uh, uh, of uh, pilot actions which dealt with renewable energy, with uh, the problem of waste, or with, um, uh, with um, green innovation in general. So this session is about how to combine RI and to talk about the relationship between sustainability transitions and RI. In the next uh, session, um, which, is, which we actually don't call a session, we will take you to our uh, 50 pilot activities. And we try to do that by uh, getting you into a, into a museum or an exhibition. But then you can ask yourself, how can we get into an exhibition if we don't meet and we don't have a physical uh, space to go there? And therefore, we created uh, a virtual exhibition, which we will send you the link of uh, 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 in the next days. And we will send you also a booklet which shows you, uh, gives you an overview on all the pilot actions and also gives you details about the pilot actions. So together we will explore this, uh, this museum, this exhibition, and um, you can see already the link to the booklet uh, in, the, in the comments. So after this uh, pilot uh, exhibition, and an important um, goal of us was always also to network and to connect with existing and other RI projects. And therefore, therefore we invited um, other RI projects still running um, to a an, uh, an virtual poster session. So we are going to meet uh, in this session and look at other projects and discuss other projects so that we can learn from another, not only about New Horizon, but also uh, from uh, about 10 other RI projects which are still up and running. Can we move on to the next? Yeah. 
in session four, I'm an important uh, uh, an important question: responsible research and innovation is also always the question of how to monitor and how to measure the impact of RI. In this session, we are going to discuss this issue. Next uh, slide, please. Um, in session five, finance responsibility impact are the opposites meeting. Um, we are going to discuss the impact and the uptake of RRI in industry and business. Next slide, please. Um, in session six, we are going to reflect on the philosophy of RRI and we pose ourselves the rather provocative and, uh, and, and, and also serious question, why could we, the RRI responsibility SDS, philosophy of technology community, not prevent post-truth to happen. Uh, we will also ask in this session whether a universalist aspiration of RI is grounded. So we are uh, taking a more uh, reflective uh, uh, stance and ask ourselves about the foundations of uh, responsible research and innovation in this setting. And uh, Mewe Joholmas will give a keynote address and will um, and we have a panel of Jake Stilgo, um, this is Van Berg and Eric Fischer. In session seven, um, we are uh, asking, we are also talking about the philosophy of responsible research and innovation, ask ourselves the questions, what are positive aspects and limits of responsible research and innovation and the three O's for the future of ethics in Horizon Europe? What is the role of democratic theory for the uptake of ethical stances in research and innovation? And what is the relation between hard and soft ethics for the responsibility, responsibilization of research and innovation? So our, uh, our speakers uh, will address these questions in session seven. Can we go on? In, um, in session eight, we are going to take up the question of interdisciplinarity. And interdisciplinarity was also a topic in many in many pilot activities. How to do it, um, how to support it, and so on. So in this question, we ask ourselves. Uh, in this session, we ask ourselves the question: How can RI work as an integrated approach to promote a better science, technology, and innovation across different disciplines that can meet the grand challenges of society? In session eight. Um, we uh, are taking again a broader perspective and uh, taking um, a perspective with looks at uh, the future in different um, in different lengths. We had uh, in the SWOFS uh, uh, pilot action, uh, in the SWOFS social lab, one pilot action was called the future of science and society and, and was a question mark more or less. And there, a uh, participant of the pilot action developed uh, four scenarios uh, about the future uh, of the political context and the future of responsible research and innovation. We also will have a, 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 a paper there, uh, the times they are changing, which is looking at, um, at the future of uh, responsible research and innovation in the context of Horizon Europe. And the same theme is also taken up um, is also taken up by a lecture on Horizon Europe and the place uh, of RI therein, but more from a research funding perspective. In session 10, we are taking up the important question of, um, of institutional change um, and RI, the importance of uh, institutional change of RI, and we are going to have different, uh, different presentations on that. One of them will be uh, uh, an hands-on experience on what it means to try to change a university from our colleagues from the University of Novi Sad. Then we are going to have uh, a more theoretical paper uh, from Elmarie Forsberg on RRI and institutional change perspectives from the RRI practice project. We will also have a, uh, a paper on RI and the learning organization. So how does RI work when we have to do with a very specific kind of organization, a learning organization? And then we are going to have a presentation on um, what our experience in the New Horizon project was with institutional change with particular research funding organizations. In session 11, we are talking about uh, 
uh, we will talk about research funding organizations of what they can do uh, to make um, uh, to integrate RI in their funding and then their funding groups. And in session 10, uh, 12, uh, we will uh, present uh, the societal readiness thinking tool. We will talk about the concept, its development, and its uptake, um, which is currently rather heavy. Yeah, and in the uh, in the final round table, we are going to talk about what we learned from the conference and we look into the future. So I hope that you will uh, enjoy this conference over the next uh, uh, two weeks. Thank you very much. Thank you uh, very much, Eri, for this uh, concise summary of uh, all that New Horizon is about and all that this conference is about. Before we, before we go on, just one practical uh, uh, issue. Anyone who has a question, please use the chat. Uh, the organizers will follow up on that and uh, bring it to my attention if I cannot follow it. But this is uh, uh, for the for the moment uh, the, the main uh, uh, way of communication. Uh, uh, later on in the session, I will uh, uh, open up, of course, to all the questions and answers that follow up on the on the panel, panel discussion. But before we start with that panel on the social labs and the pilot activities, we would like to engage our audience a bit and get to know them a little, a little better and make it a, a bit less anonymous. I see we've hit almost 100 participants right now, and we would like to, to, to hear a bit from you. Uh, so we have three questions uh, uh, through Mentimeter. Uh, for you, which obviously uh, are all related to uh, RRI. So uh, please, if you could go to the menti.com website and use the code that is depicted in the screen, and then answer your answer the questions uh, uh, that are there. And let's start with the first one. When you think about RRI, what is important for you? And then it will up to me to uh, to analyze what is coming out of that in a very quick, quick way. So uh, let me uh, see what you uh, bring to the table. Helmut, can you let me know when there is uh, uh, when everyone has has answered the question? It's constantly changing, but I think that engagement is still on top. Engagement and inclusion still there. Now openness is getting bigger. So it is about engagement. Huh? That is uh, that is the main uh, the main uh, um, factor that connects all all theories and practices on RI. Openness, inclusion, engagement with a bit of equality, sustainability, getting to it. In the beginning, there were some citizens there, but that has been getting less. But I think that this word cloud uh, is a very nice summary of um, what we think that uh, RRI is about and that we would like to carry on uh, into, uh, into the future as well, beyond uh, New Horizons. Um, Helmut, is this, uh, is, has everyone answered? Yeah. So now the next one that we would like to know, of course, in, a, in an engaging situation in, 
is to know from you which kind of organization you are from. Academia, business, civil society, policy making, research funding or other. Just give us a glance, glimpse of uh, who we have at the table here. I think it's, uh, it's already presenting the typical picture that uh, we often see in these RRI meetings. There's a lot of academia and business is all and industry is always seemingly un underrepresented. So it's growing and growing. And uh, then going to the third one, uh, we would like to hear from you what you uh, would expect to get from this conference. And again, this is a word cloud, so uh, please uh, let us know what you would like to get out of this conference. Which is not an easy question by itself, I must admit. Ah, inspiration. I think that's a good one. Lessons learned and inspiration. I think that is exactly what we hope to bring in the next two weeks. Of course, knowledge as well, but um, lessons learned. And the networking would have been great, of course, to do that live in Vienna, but we have to find, uh, I think uh, with the RRI exhibition, New Horizon has found ways to make that, uh, to organize it in an online way as well. So it's inspiration and knowledge and networking that, uh, that you hope to get from this, uh, from this uh, conference. And uh, I think that is exactly what we would like to bring to you. Um, still coming up, Helmut, or is this our final picture from the last question? I think so. We're getting to the end, yeah. Yes, we are, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for sharing the screen. Um, inspiration, and that is exactly, uh, I think, uh, uh, how we started four years ago, and we now uh, would like to go back uh, a bit in time and show you um, a time in a time capsule what we thought what we would achieve in 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 New Horizon what we wanted to achieve in New Horizon four years ago, and then we'll pick up on what has actually come to life. So please the the video. Uh, I want. The world would be shaped by uh, society itself. It means that uh, we are uh, nearing fantastic things in terms of science and technology and research and innovation now can produce things that are fantastic. Um, the only thing is that uh, it has to be along the lines of, of what, what society wants. If we produce things that are uh, seemingly fantastic but unsustainable for us or for our children, that's not a good thing. So we have to make sure that what we produce through research and innovation is indeed what society is expecting, you know. If we feel that we will take care of each other, so it's, it's more like that we are not only responsible for ourselves, but we are responsible for uh, the broader community uh, and even in the global level. So I think that is it's it's the more most important issue in, in RRI is that it goes beyond regulations and legal issues. So it's more like the attitude of care, caring and sharing. We work for and with the society. So uh, science is not detached in the in the so-called ivory tower, but you you include stakeholders and and work with them, co-create knowledge, and that's that's the very important thing about RI. What I would be, what I would really appreciate as outcome of this whole project is that we develop strategies and narratives how to engage really uh, in response to innovation, how it can 
be part of the mainstream and, how, and, and contribute to this transition. I think RI is a great uh, connecting concept which researchers and other stakeholders, so all that participate in research, uh, can work together and uh, involve society. So I would really like if this will work in the future, that society sees the importance of research, is actually supporting research, and also feels the benefits of research. So for me, that's the most important thing, that why RI uh, could exist, and I hope why it's going to be pursued. Thanks a lot, Helmut, for sh uh, sharing this, uh, this uh, video with us. Um, it showed us our aspirations uh, that we recorded during the kickoff in Vienna and great ambitions, of course, we all had and big hopes too to change the world into a better place. And uh, now we will uh, have a sort of a reality check after four years of hands on experience uh, with the social labs and with the pilot activities. So let's see how this has worked out. Uh, by listening to what our panelists have to say about this. And with this, I would like to introduce four panelists to the session. So please put on your camera. Uh, we have panelists representing four social labs. Uh, we have the social lab of the Science with and for Society, Stephanie Dimer. We have uh, a participant, social lab participant in the joint research from the Joint Research Center, Karin Ashberger. We have uh, Mika Niemien from the Social Lab on Security, and we have Yannick, Yannick Cornet uh, representing the Social Lab on Transport. But of course, we first like, would like to introduce them to, to tell them where they, uh, to introduce themselves. Uh, and, and to tell them where they actually come from, apart from their work in the social lab. So uh, please, um, Stephanie, in, if you could introduce yourself shortly, apart from your work in the social lab. Yeah, good morning, everybody. Hello, I'm Stephanie Daimer. I'm coming from Germany, from the city of Karlsruhe, where I'm working with the Fraunhofer Institute for Systems and Innovation Research. I'm responsible there for a unit which is called Policy for Innovation and transformation. Thanks, uh, Stephanie. Uh, and Mika, could you please? Yes, good morning, everybody. My name is Mika Nieminen. I'm from VTT Technical Research Center of Finland. I'm a principal scientist and team leader, leader over there. I'm leading a team called uh, Ethics and Responsibility uh, in Innovations. Um, well, um, what else? My background is originally in sociology, but uh, I've been involved in STS studies and innovation studies for 25 years. Thanks, Mika. Karen, please introduce yourself. Hello, good morning, everybody. I come from the Joint Research Center of the European Commission, located in Ispra, in Italy, and I am the coordinator of the exploratory research program of the GRC in a unit called scientific development. We also host the Center for Advanced Studies and SciArt and other programs. I have uh, coordinated the Social Lab uh, 17 about the GRC. And um, in my function, I'm dealing with uh, uh, projects in emerging topics and also with multidisciplinary teams. And my background is uh, a bit different from that. I'm a toxicologist. I, before I joined this, the current unit, I've worked in this field and I've studied at the university in Vienna. Thanks, Karin. And Yannick, please introduce yourself. Yes, good morning, everyone. So I'm a senior researcher here at the University of Zilina in, uh, in Slovakia. Uh, our uh, international department of Transport research here focuses on uh, uh, smart and sustainable mobility transitions. So everything that has to do with decision support systems, indicator frameworks, uh, actual transport case studies. And more recently, I was working on uh, the perceived travel time experience from the traveler uh, perspective. Uh, I'm originally from uh, Canada, actually, and I have an engineering degree from, from uh, 
uh, from Quebec. And I have a PhD in transport planning from the Technical University of Denmark. Thanks a lot, uh, all of you. Um, and it's interesting to hear that there are such diverse backgrounds and such interdisciplinary careers actually uh, working in RRI. So moving now a bit to the, 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 the actual work in the social labs. And uh, of course, what has been done there is important, but more important is also how were these, uh, these two social labs were intended as spaces for experiential learning of RRI. But how were they put together and who were the in, in there? Mika, could you explain how that was organized in, in, in the security social lab? Thank you, very good question. Uh, well, uh, as it was already explained in, in the introduction by Eric, uh, the idea was in the social labs to bring together uh, various active key actors or people interested in uh, to advance RRI and solve also social challenges in their organizations, projects or different programs. So we were seeking actually kind of change agents, if you like, uh, and we identified these people during our interviews before we started the social labs as well as we used actively our networks, our personal networks to identify these people. In addition, we identified also various key stakeholders uh, who would be very uh, important uh, to support the uptake of the RRI, also disseminate the idea further. So um, in the end, we had people um, um, uh, very depending also on the social lab, but in our case, we had people from the academia, our research institutes, we had business people, industry people, uh, policy makers, and, and CSOs. Uh, as it was already indicated earlier, uh, you know, most of the people were from the academia and, and uh, policy making background, national policy making background, anyway. So, approximately like this. Okay, thanks. Uh, and it was uh, indeed uh, aimed at engaging as many people as you could. Um, Stephanie, of course, in the, in the Science with and for Society Social Lab, you would expect a lot of expertise on, on RRI, uh, because a lot of these projects are funded through this <coughs> program. <coughs> was that actually the case uh, in, in, in your Social Lab? <laughs> Yes, uh, I think um, we had the expectation, that's completely true, but it was not the case in the end. So, um, yeah. um, and I really think that this is good news. So what we found is that the, um, we had we had our eye experts, so to speak, in the social lab, but we had also people there coming with an interest to learn about our eye and who were acquainted for the first time with the idea. Um, and I think this is just a sign that the SWAFs program really had managed to open up to a broader community and many people had for the first time applied for a SWAFs project and for, came for the first time across the concept of RRI. Thanks. So, so you, then you would say that you're just building the social lab as, as, as it were already enlarged uh, the knowledge on, on RRI just by building the, the social lab. Um, yeah. and, and Karin, when, when you're we're joining from the outside well, as a, as a Eurizen participant, was it immediately clear to you what this what this was all about what was the aim of the social labs um the short answer would be no <laughs> it was not uh, completely clear because the terminology rri was uh, new to me or to most of our colleagues but of course the concept is not new the the chairc has implemented and particularly we had a reorganization of the new strategy 2030 uh, about five years ago and this also um, introduced or uh, reinforced uh, reinforced the chairc values which are int integrity innovation inclusiveness openness and accountability and uh, yeah Okay, so it, it actually was a new term for something that was already there. And did, did yeah. all the participants in, in, in the GRC Social Lab understand the concepts? Uh, and it did, yeah, uh, it was also depending. So those colleagues that we invited to the Social Lab who were also involved in the development of the new strategy, they had the better understanding of this. 
for the other participants, uh, we had to find our way and explain, and then, uh, yeah, they, they, they understood. Great, great. And in, in the transport sector, Yannick, uh, was, was that the concept of RRI already, uh, already widespread? <clears throat> um, well, I would, I would concur with uh, uh, the previous answer that it depends uh, our, it, first of all, it depends where, but uh, uh, transport research is very much uh, applied research. And so uh, uh, there is uh, public engagement uh, going on. Uh, it's a key aspect of RRI, but it's not always called RRI. Uh, but at the same time, it depends where. So it's not all, all cities that we work with that, are, uh, that have the capacities or the tradition to engage with uh, a wide vari variety of, of actors at every stage of, of decision making. Uh, if I just give a quick few examples, uh, I like to use Copenhagen. It has a very strong bottom-up democratic tradition where uh, any street redesign would be co-designed with uh, citizens at the neighborhood level and uh, the city has implemented the formal and, and physical living labs uh, the Copenhagen Solutions Lab, for example, where academia and city planners and citizens and industries put together. Uh, but in other places, uh, it, it's, it's not always like that. And it depends also of which stakeholders we're talking about. So very quickly in Slovakia, uh, perhaps due to a, a lingering communist tradition, there's very little experience in in, in, in deep consultation with citizens and, and stakeholders. And that was one of the reasons for having a, a, a mobility lab here in, in, in Gilina. Uh, but even in, uh, in the UK, in Oxford, I did a research once on a, on a, a roundabout uh, renewal there. And not every stakeholder was involved at the same level. Uh, some uh, like public transport operators, tend to be involved at a partnership level, if we use Einstein's uh, ladder of uh, degree of power, while uh, all the cyclist uh, group were merely informed. So it's, it's a very interesting topic, actually. So if I summarize this, you, you would say that it is more depending on the, on, the, on the local culture and context that defines how well this RI concepts are taken up already or not, and it's not necessarily dependent on the type of stakeholder. And is there any any um, way that the transport sector includes responsibility as 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 a, as a broader concept in its its vocabulary, a bit like the GRC with other terms? Um, that's a that's a difficult question. I mean, if we look at the new Horizon Europe calls, research calls, uh, responsibility and, re and uh, responsible research and innovation is, is mentioned in the, in the cluster five texts, but uh, it seems, I wouldn't call it an afterthought, but let's say that uh, citizen engagement is not, is not entirely woven in the, the whole uh, uh, call. Uh, it's there's some specific projects focusing on fostering a just transition or strengthening social sciences but uh, it's it's a bit like uh, uh, it, it's a bit like uh, csr in a company uh, corporate social responsibility yes. you make it a small department that just does that or if you actually uh, live and implement csr within the whole company it's a different approach and i would say currently it's it's more like a niche area the, just an example, connected and automated mobility in the new uh, Horizon calls is mentioned 208 times. That's an actual solution, while citizen engagement uh, is mentioned seven times and citizens is mentioned about 90 times, just to give an idea of, of what's going on. So the research uh, from the commission level is, is very much more technology focused than, and, and uh, uh, techno fix kind of oriented rather than bottom up engagement let's just say if i can draw the line like this that's really very interesting because they are of course the conceptual fathers of of, of this rri uh, policy uh, making um uh, mika how was that in the security this this vocabulary 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 on uh, 
responsibility in, in, the, in the security sector. Was that any different than, than Yannick explained? Any other insights? Well, the overview by the colleagues sounds very familiar to me as well. So uh, I could say that, uh, or to put it shortly, that um, error as a concept, error right concept was not well known over there. You can find it in different documents, for instance, in H2020, but, but when you are talking to people, when, when we interview people, and it wasn't actually that one, that, that well known. So, there, and, but there was uh, um, awareness of responsibility, different dimensions of responsibility uh, over there, very much actually. Uh, but it was understood a little bit differently, not in terms of RRI as such, but, but for instance, in terms of fundamental rights. So when we are talking about uh, the sector of security, there, there is a, a kind of high awareness of issues like privacy or data protection, issues like that, which have a, a strong ethical perspective, of course. Um, so, and there was also some limited uh, awareness of uh, such issues like ethics. Okay, we are talking about research ethics mostly, but also open science and innovation as well. So they, they were kind of seen useful issues and that was a kind of very important aspect as well that uh, the innovators saw it a kind of useful for them, what they're actually doing over there. So. Um, Mm, but um, actually, what I, if I would put it in, in a nutshell, I would say that it was more seen as kind of risk management and following legislation, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, than actually kind of, you know, uh, acting responsibly in a world or actually maybe I would say, say it in that way that, that uh, security as such is a responsible act in a society. These people see it that, that way. So I think that there is there are similarities, but also this is a very context specific issue as well. So the contextuality is very important over here, I think. So. Yeah, I think that is a common issue that we see everywhere in all the social apps. That the context context of all the things that we are doing is so important. Um, so so these social apps were then put together. And of course, the, the vocabulary and the policies are, um, are, um, are important to realize that it is not always obvious to everyone. Um, but did it take long for your social lab to find the common ground, Stephanie? And, and if yes, what, what helped to find the common ground? And if not, what was the barrier there? Could you elaborate a bit on that? Yes. Um... You know, when we started the social lab work in, in 2018, um, the plans um, for Horizon Europe for the, for the next framework program were already quite advanced. And it was quite clear that a program like Science Within Full Society would um, no longer be a part of the framework program. It, there was a clear um, yeah, perspective that this uh, would be dissolved. Um, and also the um, the unit dealing in the European Commission, uh, dealing with science within full society, um, was dissolved at that time. And um, it became clear that the concept of RI um, was losing political support. It was um, not clear whether the idea of embedding it throughout the whole framework pro program would, would also um, hold true for the next um, framework program. So overall, um, it was a bit uh, a depressing start, I would say. We were not sure whether people would find it relevant to work on the topic, um, but the opposite was true. So people were really united by the idea that the social lab, um, social labs, I think it, this holds true also for other social labs, that the social labs are a good place um, to work on, on future perspectives, to, to develop forward-looking um, yeah, um, ideas and approaches. Um, uh, how to how to embed RI in in the future in the framework program and throughout the framework program and how to to work with the ideas of the concept further on. So this um, this common ground, um, not to be <laughs> pessimistic, but but be make a make a contribution to how it can be in the future was um, clearly there. Um, um, what I think um, was a bit more difficult was to um, to translate this common ground into into um 
into the activities actually. So there were a lot of um, different opinions in the room, how or what to make out of it and how to approach it. And this was a bit kind of a, a challenge to um, to come back to the to the basic idea to the common ground throughout the social lab process and to to unite the group again um, around the, the activities that were eventually defined. Um, thanks, uh, Stephanie. So putting putting RRI in practice is, is uh, even if you have common ground, is not so easy. Is that something that you recognize, uh, Yannick and, uh, and Karin, in, from your social lab? <laughs> Um, well, in our case, well, first we did one one social lab on the on the smart green and integrated transport, and we targeted the youth, and uh, we invited a whole uh, classroom of of, uh, of uh, high school students. So, so in a way that that went quite well, and um, I had a clear process in mind uh, based on a let's say proven method. Uh, for addressing this kind of systemic challenges. Uh, it's, it's called backcasting. It's, it's rather simple. So the, the method we implemented was already kind of pre-decided and, and turned out to work quite well. And this backcasting approach just very quickly is, is based on the, it's called the, uh, the natural step from uh, uh, an, uh, ABCD process. So it's basically first uh, understanding uh, the current mobility context, and there we used uh, a big map where uh, we discussed the problems that uh, we're experiencing with the transport system and asked to present the good and the bad, and, and, and students came up with uh, issues related to infrastructure and cost and comfort and other people and the environment. So establishing the base, and then the second step is to envision a desirable, perfect um, future mobility system uh, we did a kind of collage for that, and, and and the third step was to then propose and vote on on actual policies that could act as stepping stones towards that vision. So, hence the backcasting. It's not a forecasting approach. It's backcasting from a desirable vision, and this whole process worked worked quite quite well actually with our group in in our case. Thanks, Yannick. Sounds very very interesting. So there are ways to, to get these things to work. Karin, how how was that in, 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 in the in the DRC social lab? What does it actually mean there to, to develop an activity well, or based upon a common ground? How how were these uh, these pilot actions then conceived and how were they operationalized? Can you uh, elaborate a bit on that? Yeah, we could uh, relatively quickly find the ground for one specific project, which I, based on my experience with many projects at the GRC, I had more or less selected or I approached the project leaders. And it was in a similar topic as the Yannick just explained in the future of mobility connected and automated vehicles. And uh, I think it was good because on the one hand, we had, as I said before, through through this uh, new strategy, there was an initiative and an encouragement in the citizen engagement. We also have a, a, a group dealing with citizen, citizen engagement and deliberative democracy, which supported us in this. And we had a specific topic, this connected and automated vehicles and the future of mobility. And within this project, we had a lot of um, interested and also engaged uh, colleagues and motivated colleagues and uh, and we kicked off a, a few of initiatives in this so we organized an inception workshop to attract the attention and the interest of uh, GRC staff we had several focus groups first within our own colleagues but then also with external participants and this is something that continued also beyond the social lab and is ongoing in the in the specific uh, unit that is dealing with the uh, transport and uh, and then um, we launched a Europarameter consultation and uh, also a, launched a living lab for future mobility solutions at the GRC. And I would not say that this is because we participated in the social lab, but the social lab or our uh, collaboration with uh, the, the New Horizon project leaders, they gave a lot of input. And uh, uh, I think the Europarameter actually was 
an initiative or an, an idea that came from from our participation the others were already starting but of course it was a, a good uh, input that we received what helped us was a strong interest and the involvement and engagement of the participants also because this was uh, kicked off in the reorganization with this group on citizen engagement and deliberative democracy so we could combine the, the research and these other parts the more the citizen engagement part what was a barrier was that um, it's always a bit like okay it's nice to do is the institutional work usually then leaves very little space for this so it takes over then and uh, once the project is um, is running um, many colleagues have to go back to to other tasks and of course a, a big barrier was also the lockdown because we could not continue some of the initiatives or in a different way like the focus groups that we then had to organize online instead of interacting personally with the with the colleagues or with the other participants thanks karin yeah that's 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 for sure we didn't mention it so much only that we have to have this online but of course the impediments due to the COVID pandemic have been huge. Uh, although I suppose they also will give um, uh, new chances uh, to, to pursue now. Um, and, and, and as I hear it, there was already fertile ground that you could build upon to, to, to create these pilot activities. And also it is the trouble that we always see with the project-based work as soon as the funding stops everybody goes back to normal and that is exactly why this issue of transformative change and, and, and sustainable transformation is so important and is at the same time so difficult to, to achieve of course. Um, just following up uh, with uh, Stephanie and uh, Mika, how was that in, in, in terms of pilot activities in, in your social lab? Do you yeah. start, Stephanie, or <laughs> <laughs> I can do that, Mika. Okay. Um, yes, um, we um, we defined um, three activities and followed up three activities. Um, quite diverse, I would say. The first one was uh, one on um, developing a tool that could help um, beneficiaries of, of Horizon 2020, for example, of, of other programs, to follow up um, their project and their research um, um, yeah, in terms of what kind of impacts they could create, they, they want to create, they might create. So, in, uh, so it, it, it's sort of a reflection tool that could help um, them to to really, yeah, look at the impact side of their project. Um, that was one activity. Um, the other one was a transfer of knowledge um, pilot action um, that was in the field of science education. So science education actually is a, is a huge part of SWOFs if you look at it in terms of um, uh, n number of projects or funding. Um, and a lot of had be, has been developed there and there is um, the area of um, science education for the youngest, youngest, so in the kindergarten or primary school age. And this is really interesting how um, concepts now turn up, um, how uh, yeah, that, that to try to um, integrate the ideas of responsibility um, in the education of that age group and the pilot was about that. And the third one was a pilot about the future of science and society and Erich mentioned that in his uh, initial um, presentation, we put a big question mark between science and society because we said the future is open. What would uh, what happen now in that relationship and how it will be, um, yeah, it, it will be shaped and what kind of um, um, yeah, actions um, will shape this relationship. Um, and this was an awareness raising pilot basically. So we did a couple of activities to raise um, um, primarily political awareness for the issue uh, and also for the relevance of the topic. Mika? Mm, yeah, thank you. Um, maybe I'll comment on a general level, a little bit of uh, these social absentee challenge, challenges first. I think that what was mentioned over there that there, there uh, already, um, I think you mentioned it uh, in a more, but uh, that, that there should be a kind of genuine uh, motivation uh, in the organization to uptake the error, right? to pay attention to these aspects as well. It should be embedded somehow over there, the motivation. And there should be also uh, support 
uh, preferably by the leadership of the of the organization as well. So so it it goes more smoothly forward, I would say, if it, there is support and the motivation is 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 already over there. And so we come over there and we we start to solve real uh, challenges they have over there uh, on how they should could implement these issues in their organization. So I think this, these were the, the most uh, successful cases in, in, in our case. Uh, and it needed, uh, like I said, a lot of tailor making as well in this specific context. So we needed to kind of translate these, these concepts, these conceptualizations we are actually using, uh, the language of RRI into their language. What they think, what, what, what is our, uh, what is relevant for them and, and how they are talking about those issues. So uh, this was, there was a kind of this kind of translation um, act, I think, as well. So uh, we had actually four different um, uh, pilots in our case, but maybe I'll give you two, two examples, which I, I think are, are, are really good ones. So the first one is uh, we, we made an ethical framework for AI related R&D funding goals in a regional council here in Tampere where I'm, I'm at the moment in Finland. And it was a framework uh, for projects uh, to consider different AI ethics related aspects when they are already preparing their project. And the, the need for this, it came from the organization, from the regional council, because they consider this is extremely important. We need to pay attention to this. So, so we started to, to develop this kind of framework for, for these projects and how they, how they should, what they should, uh, uh, what kind of aspects they should pay attention to uh, when they are preparing in practice uh, their projects. So of course, there is a lot of different principles. There are, you know, we have identified, I think, over, over 100 different principles of this, but how to make this really kind of functioning, that, that's the challenge and that, that was the actual work in this case. So um, another uh, nice case was the implementation of RRI in a Polish University College of Finland, College of Finland. Uh, in Finland, to explain a little bit, it's a third year education here in Finland to Polish education. That's, that's not the same in every country, so that's why I'm saying it. So, but but uh, we created actually an online course on RRI or responsibility related issues uh, on a Moodle platform, online platform over there. So, and now somebody may ask that why, why RRI, how it's connected to, to police academia and police work. So uh, uh, actually uh, there's a lot of preventive, uh, preventative uh, police work and in various situations, they are doing actually community development as well, where they have to pay attention to different aspects of responsibility over there. And their development projects, like you know, any development project we are running over here, and they have to do that background studies and everything like that, take into engage people, community people over there, take into account different values. So it's a preventative work for uh, preventing kind of let's say circumstances to to develop which support a kind of criminal activity or unrest or whatever you you might call it so uh and it's very important for them actually and they identified this need themselves so uh, we, we try to develop this this with them this kind of examples for instance thanks nika i think this is uh, that you raise an, another important issue that that at least we hear a lot as well, and that is the 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 the, the translation and the language of RRI, which is has to be brought outside of our our RRI expert bubble, but to to align that with the with the concepts and the needs of the people that are working with it. But it sounds that there is uh, that there was the commitment of the people in the in the pilot activities, stood pilot activities was was, was great as well. So, or did you really have to convince them to participate in these early stages and do this, this reflection in, in an early stage? Mm. So, okay, so, so moving on to, to Yannick, these, uh, these pilot activities that you were involved in, 
uh, what was the focus in this in this transport area, and what what did it bring? Uh huh. Um, well, our our urban our youth urban mobility lab was called Gen Voice, so that was short for giving future generations uh, a voice on mobility. Uh, so the first goal was really to, to give a voice to, uh, to citizens and, and public transport uh, users who are not usually heard in transport planning. And in this case, a focus on the youth. Uh, so we wanted to hear their opinions, to understand their needs and their future visions and run the process that I explained earlier to see what would come out of that. Uh, uh, but the second is the second focus was also something that mattered more to me was uh, how do we reconcile uh, democratic engagement processes with uh, long-term sustainability imperatives? Uh, the climate crisis or the ecological crisis are slowly unfolding. Uh, uh, in other words, how do we account for the, the future generation's interest in decision-making today? And the question behind that was then, can the youth represent uh, the needs of future generations in transport investment uh, choices that we make today. Uh, then you ask, what did it bring? Uh, I, I, I would like to perhaps just quote some of the learnings from the participants. Uh, in, in, terms of, in terms of process, the, 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 the students there really enjoyed it. They said, uh, I liked it was not like a lecture. We worked uh, alone and in groups. We invented our ideas and thoughts. We were creative. We learned that we can work on a topic that we have never discussed with and be interested in it by combining multiple ideas and opinions, things that benefit our country and people can arise. I thought that was a really nice uh, outcome. In terms of mobility, they concluded, and let me quote again, um, <clears throat> we should be more interested in what is happening around us, especially in our city and traffic situation. We should, we should discuss this more and come up with solutions. We could also talk about problems between our cities. We found out that they are similar and can be compared with the ones we experience here in Jelina every day. So that's also an interesting and, and somewhat empowering message. And the third is uh, in terms of sustainability itself, a quick conclusion from them was the future is in our hands and we should do something. Yeah, so it really raised, uh, give, give, gave them the opportunity to get engaged and, and, and take responsibility also for their own future. So, so I think the commitment among the, the younger people is, is probably very big. Um, and, it is, and, it is, and it would be nice if, if RRI could be the concept to also translate the leadership in all these institutions to change their behavior as well. Um, what, uh, what, what, how was that in your, uh, uh, in, in your so social lab, uh, Karin? Were there any consequences of the pilot activity that should be developed and what kind of consequences if they, if they were there? Okay, thank you. Yeah, first of all, I want to confirm many of the experiences that Yannick just uh, explained or um, reported because we, are, we had our social lab in the, in the, in the same uh, area of the, of the transport, of the future of transport and mobility. Uh, as a consequence, yes, the citizen engagement has become an important part of the, uh, of the unit that uh, was leading this project to find innovative mobility solutions and opportunities to improve the governance of, uh, on key mobility issues in the EU. They have carried out, uh, following our kickoff, uh, several focus groups across the EU and non-EU. But in parallel to this leading unit, or the, 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 the unit leading this project, there are other activities ongoing. So it's not exclusively this, this one unit, it's just that they participated in our social lab. Um, in this uh, particular unit, which was more involved in our social lab, they also sparked the Living Labs initiative, including a future mobility solutions lab, which uh, entails the involvement of all relevant stakeholders in the research activities, like the private sector, the public sector, uh, public authorities, academia, and the citizens. And uh, there are also three uh, projects related to mobility are currently running, which is a social rights sharing application and electric robotized vehicle platform for both transport uh, of people and of goods. 
and an automated droid of last mile delivery of goods and food. So this is currently ongoing in um, not necessarily as a consequence, but maybe supported by our activities. We had also um, the results of, of our engagement uh, contributed to a flagship report about the future of road transport, which is then also giving input to the policy DGs. And uh, as a consequence or as a, as a conclusion of our activities in the social lab, we prepared a, a RRI toolkit for our GOC colleagues, which, uh, in which we share our experiences and also provide guidance to other colleagues to, uh, and, and we are also available to, to share personally our experiences so we give context to others. So thanks a lot, Karin. I think I, what I hear is that there are a lot of activities that are maintained also yes. beyond mm -hmm. the lifetime of of, yes. of the Horizon mm -hmm. Trick project, so it has mm -hmm. ignited uh, uh, and inspired uh, activities, and maybe gave the yeah. gave mm -hmm. room for more kind of mainstreaming activities. Mm -hmm. um, just as a final question, with hopefully a short answer, because I would like to have a bit of uh, room for the question and answering session. Is is what what kind of change did uh, Social Lab and the pilot? Activities bring in your uh, bring bring about in your perceptions. What is what would change be in in one one or two words? Should I continue now? Yeah, it's the openness to other sources of information, the inclusiveness of the citizens' perspectives to give it also more meaning to the research because the research should be uh, particularly now at the chairs. For us at the GRC, where we we're providing um, the the scientific and technical um, um, guidance, no, not guidance, uh, input to the to the policy DGs, and uh, we need to in, in involve the people. And it's also important to engage people in the co-design of a new technology. So it can start with our own colleagues as part of the citizen of, of the population, and then. Uh, also broader than uh, to invite the citizens and involve them in, in the development of new technologies, also to see the perception and how it is uh, acceptance, accepted by the society. Thanks, Karin. Stephanie, anything to add? What, what, is, yeah. what is for you the change word? I would like to join Karin in the, in the openness um, thing. And I would add, it's not only openness towards the perspective of citizens, it's also openness towards um, um, the approaches we take as researchers. Um, so it's not, um, I think, um, what, what I learned, and I think what many participants maybe also um, share in the social lab is that there's not just one right way to do RI or to integrate RI. There are many, many ways out there. And it's, um, um, maybe more important that people try to do it than to do it right. And that's something that I learned. Um, and just to add, I also think um, um, in terms of awareness raising, we, we had some successes. Thanks. Mika? Well, it's easy to agree with the others as well. Um, I had a couple of points. Uh, I already said, uh, said that there's a lot of translation and tailor making is needed. That is one point. So, and as Stephanie said, there is no one size fits all policy of RRI. There's no such a thing, actually. So, and I think that the, also uh, this social labs, this kind of activity is needed for, for uh, benchmarks as benchmarks for pra practical impl implementation. And the, maybe the fourth point, my fourth point is that uh, uh, I, I, I see that there is, there is a, uh, a lot of motivation actually in many cases to take up the responsibility aspects over the, over there in, in the activities. But the question is how to do this in practice and we need kind of benchmarks for practical activities. How to implement the responsibility in real life, in real organization, in real programs. That's very crucial, I think so. Thank you. To make it sustainable. And then mm -hmm. Yannick, last word to you. What, how, how about change? In, in, in well, the major takeaway for me, uh, both in terms of uh, process and, and content, is that there's really value in involving the youth, particularly the 16 to 19 years old. They, 
they first of all they're hung they were hungry for more they clearly enjoy their being asked their opinion and then they really can provide valuable original feedback i mean in transport it was clear for them that the automobile is not a must they were not talking of connected and automated mobility they were talking of healthy transport uh, that people should move more and use their feet more and we don't have to use the car and public transport everywhere but it's good to uh, refresh our minds by walking or running or cycling and burn the calories so it was really a, a learning experience for me and we've we've pitched new project proposals where we where we uh, plan to involve more uh, youth uh, and schools more systematically. That's the main learning for, uh, for change for me. Thanks a lot, uh, Yannick, and thanks to all the panelists uh, for their contribution and their considerations on the social apps and the pilot activities and how RI has developed in, in those. Um, there's still a little bit time for question and answering. I've seen two questions in the chat. I think the first one is, well, the one is on the, on, the, on the reflection tool. I think that's been solved. The other one is from Fabio Coelho um, from K&I to hear about the main lessons uh, for mainstreaming uh, for the forthcoming program. Um, and I think that is, that is, exactly what we are all maybe struggling for uh the, the the no one size fits all and then how to connect that to mainstreaming questions uh who would like to 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 respond to to fabio of the panelists well, I... stephanie I could give it a try. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a big, big, big question. Yeah. Thank you, Fabio, for this question. And you're completely right. I mean, this is this is the ambition of the project. Um, I think um, we all know that that mainstreaming does not only happen at the level of the of the beneficiaries and of those who are writing proposals, right? So it's not just the, the research and innovation communities. It um, starts earlier. It starts with those people writing the work programs and those people trying to understand what a cross-cutting issue like responsible research and innovation could mean for their team and for their project and how to embed that. And um, and these people and also the evaluators who, who read the proposals um, have to have an understanding of the cross-cutting issue in order to, to embed it properly, right? And this um, kind of understanding should be uh, accompanied by, I guess, um, other other structures of evaluation and other yeah uh, uh, yeah another value that is given to our elements in such a proposal and so on and we all know that and i think our what new horizon can contribute to that is is the narratives and the examples and um the yeah the, the stories that we try to bring out um in in different formats now and um um that could help just illustrate how it can work and what what good practices can be. And um, um, our task is um, obviously to share all these examples with, with um, as many people as possible. Fabio, you want to respond? Yeah, I, I could continue from here. It's very easy to continue. I, I yeah. fully agree with Stephanie. And, and I, I think really that the incentives are needed in the in the project preparation as well on the program level as well. So it needs to be a criteria of evaluation uh, 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 for the projects that there are RRI different RRI dimensions or responsible dimensions over there. But at the same time, I think there is a need of uh, a lot of support for people who are actually doing this work. Uh, project work and, and, and doing the proposals as well because they are not that aware of what does this mean or they haven't been thinking about it what does it mean the implementation of this in, in my real area what I'm doing over here they might have an understanding for instance research ethics most uh, of course we all have the ideal research ethics that we do need to follow it but but when we are talking about RRI, we are talking about social impacts, environmental impacts, different kinds of impacts in the whole society. And this is a kind of a much wider perspective. And this, this is perhaps a little bit challenging for uh, many kind of, what would I say, many researchers, they, they think about their own issues 
and they don't think about the wider societal effects maybe. So uh, I think there is a need for support as well and and, and it should be integrated in, in, in the, the different practices of, of evaluation as well. So there would be the incentive as well. Thanks, Mika. I think there's uh, one question left for Yannick um, from Yasamina. I'm just reading it. So I suppose you can all read it. But uh, Yannick, are you thinking of applying the approach of involving young people in different regions of the world in, in transport and mobility? Well, actually, yes, we're waiting for a answer, the answer from the Commission on a project proposal that we submitted as part of the European Green Deal in January, where uh, the idea is to uh, do a, a citizen science and involve schools across uh, all European countries, basically from Norway to, to, to Greece, uh, and uh, have them uh, take part in, uh, have the youth take part in actual research uh, on the air pollution and biodiversity impacts of transportation and uh, involve them in, in, in that way. So it's more a citizen science approach this time that we're targeting, but a much bigger scale. But we don't know if it will be successful yet. So we're crossing fingers on that oh, one. There are a lot of submissions, uh, Yannick, in that call. <laughs> For sure. I know. Anyway. I think we are coming to a close of this uh, first opening session of the of the uh, New Horizon Final Conference. I think what we've heard is is a lot of interesting insights into the practical operation of of putting uh, RI in practice and grounding these RI practices. Um, it's based on on a, a very broad diversity of approaches and activities, uh, finding the language and the translation to the to the institutional level, and especially not to forget the science education part <clears throat> that is, I find often the most uh, forgotten one or the less less the least prominent one, and getting these more radical visions, uh, democratic visions on board as well to 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 eventually create this 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 better uh a better life that we all aspired in the beginning so i think with no further uh, uh um uh questions i'd like to close this session i would like to draw your attention to the keynote uh, uh presentation in this afternoon by lyndon ferrer and that has been moderated by fint and block so thank you very much for your participation this morning and uh, hope to see you in the afternoon uh all again um and thank you for for listening so and also very very big thanks to our panelists for them joining our session and explaining all their their details on the, on the practical work so thanks a lot again and see you see you back later during the next two weeks bye bye